honoured guests, friends, colleagues, and my fellow Cape Townians. Good morning. Kuimora, Mulweni, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom. It is the singular honour of my life to address you today for the very first time as the Mayor of the City of Cape Town. Our city is a place of unrivaled natural beauty. Our residents are a people of unlimited talent and our future is brimming with unmatched potential. I am deeply humbled by the trust that you have placed in me to lead our great city into that future. I pledge to work every single day to deepen the trust that you have placed in me and the government team that I now lead. But all that we may achieve will only be possible because we build on the work that those of those who have gone before. I wish to sincerely honor, from the bottom of my heart, Mayor Dan Plato, who laid the foundation <laughs> who laid the foundation that we will build on over the coming five years, except for you, Dan, bye bye, donkey. We can also only build on the platform of the love and care and support of our families. And I'm so grateful to have my wife, Carla, and my daughter in the gallery today. On this very first day of our new administration, I want every Cape Tonian to know what they should expect from us in the years ahead. The government that has been elected by the people of Cape Town that is gathered here today, we publicly affirm that we will serve this city with a clear, higher purpose. And that purpose can be summed up in one sentence. To restore hope in South Africa by turning Cape Town into living proof that we can roll back poverty, that we can overcome the long shadows of our past, and that our country can still realize the society dreamed of in the founding document of our democracy, the Constitution. A city more caring, more inclusive, more prosperous, more united, more respectful, more safe, and more free. My fellow Cape Tonians, today we map out the route for this purpose-driven journey of hope that we are embarking on. Hierdie administratie gaan handel met een enkele doel voor ons oor. En dit is om weer hoop te gee aan die mense van Kaapstad. Siniwile, logulumento, uzo sebenzele, ukunika itemba, kabantu besikleko sese kapa. But to know where this journey should lead us, we must first understand where we are starting from. The South Africa of 2021 is not the place our parents dreamed of in 1994. Our country is enveloped by a sense of fear and anxiety that things are headed in the wrong direction. And if there is one thing that no society, and certainly no constitutional democracy, can survive without, it is hope. Hope is the fuel that powers our society forward, the belief that things can change, that progress is pot possible, and that problems can be solved. Our journey today must start with the recognition that more and more South Africans are feeling hopeless about the future. So to the voters of Cape Town, and indeed the voters of the whole country, who have lost hope and stayed home on election day, I want to say that we have heard your message loud and clear. More of the same isn't going to cut it. Words are no longer enough. It is time for fresh thinking. For our country to rekindle the hope that we need to fuel our future and safeguard our democracy, we really need one place in South Africa that practically and unequivocally demonstrates that a prosperous and inclusive future is still realizable. A place that is not only interested in managing slow decline, but in beating the decline in favor of driving progress. A place that aims higher, lifts its sights, 
raises its ambitions, and dares to think differently. This place that does this for South Africa can and must be Cape Town. That is our sense of higher purpose, and that is why that higher purpose extends far beyond our own city limits. It matters profoundly to the future of every single South African that Cape Town succeeds in our mission to show that well-run city governments can solve the problems that too many of us have come to regard as unsolvable. Ons kan en ons moet armoede verslaan. Many governments around the world have meaningfully lifted millions of people out of poverty over time. They have done so because they've understood a simple truth. Good government underpins economic growth. Economic growth underpins investment. And investment and economic growth both lift people out of poverty over time. Everything we do Everything we do over the next five years will be focused on creating the conditions for meaningfully foster economic growth in Cape Town so that we can lift more Cape Townians out of poverty. So I say today to the young person living without a job in Kales River or Lentegir or Kosovo, we dedicate ourselves today to nurturing economic growth in the city so that you have a better chance of finding work. To the small business owner who has done everything in your power, particularly over the last two years, to keep your doors open and keep paying your staff, we dedicate ourselves today to foster growth in the city so that your small business has a better chance at thriving. <laughs> to the single mothers who wake up at 4 a.m. every morning to go to work to provide for your children, we de dedicate ourselves today to playing our part in making this economy grow faster, to give you more choices, and to give your children a better future. <laughs> to every single Cape Townian who still suffers the indignity and deprivation of poverty, we know that our higher purpose is to serve you, to grow this economy so that your burdens may be eased. Economic recovery from the COVID crisis will require doubling our efforts to expand and maintain our city infrastructure and ensure excellent services are delivered to all. But we also understand that some of our citizens need more help today. Those whose efforts to seek new opportunity are frustrated by the brutal intersection of poverty and financial obligations. It is with these residents firmly in mind that I am today proud to announce the first major commitment of this administration is to increase our allocation to free basic services to our poorest residents by over 600 million rand in the next financial wow. year. This will constitute a 20% increase in our city's investment in the free basic services that our most vulnerable residents rely on. It will increase the total amount spent by our city every year on free basic services for the poorest residents from 3.1 billion rand to 3.7 billion rand next year. <laughs> Today, we demonstrate our commitment to building a more inclusive and caring city with this very significant extra allocation to free basic services. We also know that a growing economy requires constant infrastructure investment that keeps pace with our fast-growing city population. Successful cities are those who are always building and investing in new infrastructure. When you stop building, you stop growing. And infrastructure is also vital for a city committed to care and dignity. It is not possible for us to restore hope and dignity to communities while sewers are overflowing in many parts of our city. Tomorrow, on day one, I am going straight to Kailitsha and Phoenix, where there are serious challenges with sewage infrastructure. We know that sewers will occasionally block and pump stations will occasionally break down. 
But when these problems are reported, they must be attended to with the same speed and service excellence, no matter where you live in our city. Let me make this absolutely clear. Servants, service complaints should be answered promptly, and residents should be given the respect of an explanation if their complaints will take some time to resolve. That is the standard we in the DA set for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, during the election campaign, I spoke about how we should restore a sense of pride to Cape Town. However, that pride will not come from government alone. We can only restore our sense of civic pride by joining hands with committed residents and active communities who are prepared to help us build the Cape Town of the future. In that regard, I'd, I'd like to welcome a very special guest here today, Ms. Caroline Marks from the Milneton Residents and Ratepayers Association, who is an example to every Cape Townian of the critical role active community organizations play. She almost single-handedly drove the issue of the deterioration of the Milneton Lagoon. And in the process, and I don't think she knows this, she served as one of the early inspirations to me that convinced me to run for this office. So that we could all do more to fulfill Cape Town's true potential. Caroline, thank you for the work that you do in an often thankless job. And I look forward to joining with you and many other great Cape Townians like you across our city in building the future. Our city needs more people like Caroline to get involved. Even as we make more resources available to support vulnerable communities, we need residents to come forward to apply for our generous indigency program. We need Cape Townians to help us protect our infrastructure. Every one of us suffers when cables are stolen or drains are deliberately obstructed and blocked. When metal is stolen or infrastructure stripped, we cannot run trains or keep the lights on and the most vulnerable residents suffer the most. Dit kan rechtig nie so aangaan nie. Ons kan nie aanhoudend skaars hulpbronne spandeer om infrastructuur recht te maak wat doelbewus gebreek word nie. We also need Cape Townians to take pride in a cleaner city by helping to end the destructive practices of illegal dumping and littering. It is time to clean up Cape Town. Our international visitors are coming back, and we need to show them that Cape Town is back. Ons amal weet dat jy eers jou eie huis ordentlik moet skoonmaak voordat jy besoekers kan verwelkom. Over the coming weeks and months, I would like every one of us in this council, and I invite all of us to join, to roll up our sleeves, to join with committed residents and community organizations to spring clean Cape Town. I will be out there, and I hope to see you out there too. Whenever a resident of our city, no matter who they vote for, travels to any other part of the country or part of the world, I want them to feel a deep sense of pride when they tell people, I live in Cape Town. That is what we want. Here in Cape Town, we also take pride in running a clean and ethical administration. I want to be clear that good governance is and will remain a non-negotiable in Cape Town precisely because we are committed to serving the poorest and most vulnerable members of our society. It is the poor who benefit most from honest and clean administration, and it is the vulnerable who suffer the worst consequences of corruption. When ambulances are broken, when no one answers the phone, when fire engines don't work, when taps run dry, and when money meant for infrastructure is stolen, it is the poor who pay the price. So good governance is a profoundly moral commitment, and that is why it will be a non-negotiable under this administration. It is also out of this commitment that I can announce today that every member appointed to my mayoral committee next week will undergo a lifestyle audit on assuming office. After spending a decade in Parliament, I know full well that sunlight is the best disinfectant. Precisely because we want resources to reach the people who need it most, I intend to run an open, accessible and transparent government 
that engages with residents regularly, including in new and innovative ways on online and social media platforms. Our data should be open and accessible to residents and community groups who need it. And wherever possible, they shouldn't have to ask for it. It should be published proactively on our city website. And let me pause on the topic of accountability to address the Leader of the Opposition in this Council, an old friend. I have come from a legislature, sir, where the government often shows a poor understanding of the vital constitutional role that a vigorous opposition must play. Given my experience there, I give you my commitment that that will not happen here, and that the opposition will be respected for the important role that you play in our democracy. For us to take Cape Town on this journey of hope, we must also rediscover the courage to envision the future that we want. I invite you to join me in imagining a Cape Town with, with reliable, sustainable and affordable electricity for all. Imagine Cape Town as the easiest place on the entire African continent for entrepreneurs to build businesses and employ more people. Imagine our city with enough policing resources to turn the tide against crime and make our communities feel genuinely safer. Imagine a city with a booming construction industry that provides, provides thousands of new homes to Cape Townians. Imagine Cape Town with a functioning and integrated public transport system where modern trains run like major arteries through our city, while bus and taxi routes link with the rail system to form the veins that reach out from those arteries across every community. Now, let's stop imagining this future and let's start building it. Kom ons krij dit gedoen. Masenze. Masenze is zinto zenzeke. We are going to end load shedding in Cape Town over time. Why? Because economic growth that restores hope to the unemployed and the impoverished residents requires a stable electricity supply before anything else. We are going to cut red tape and make this the premier investment destination in Africa so that we can create thousands of new jobs. Why? Because nothing provides a sense of dignity and purpose and pride like gainful employment. We are going to expand our successful LEAP program with Premier Windy and, and uh, Minister Fritz and invest in modern crime-fighting technology. Why? Because reducing crime is a prerequisite for lifting the oppression and anxiety that comes with living in constant fear, especially in our poorest and most vulnerable communities. We are going to release city-owned land and fight for the national government to do the same so that we can deliver thousands of new homes and private title to residents. Why? Because this year marks 30 years since the repeal of the Group Areas Act in 1991. And we now know that the state alone cannot deliver homes at the scale we need to right the injustice of that law. And because we know that providing private title and ownership to our poorest communities is one of the most important things that we can do to achieve true economic freedom. We are going to expand the My City Bus Service, restore the M2 Express route, and work towards taking over passenger rail in Cape Town. Why? Why will we do it? Because safe and reliable public transport restores hope in the future by linking unemployed people with work opportunities and making it cheaper for families to get to school and move around our city. We are going to do these things not only because this is the overwhelming mandate we have received from the voters, but also because it is this government's moral obligation to get these things done. My fellow Cape Townians, the purpose we have chosen to fulfill is to turn Cape Town into a beacon of hope for South Africa at a time when millions of our citizens believe that our country is past the point of no return and where local governments can do nothing more than manage decline. I am not one of those people and this will not be one of those governments. I am motivated by a deep and abiding love for the people of this city and of this country 
I am inspired every day by the resilience, talent and passion of the people of Cape Town. And, it, and I believe that it is by supporting, nurturing and empowering the people of the city that we will restore hope in our collective future. But above all, we, the elected government of the city of Cape Town, will not entertain for even one second the idea that our best days are behind us. Our best days are ahead of us and we are just getting started. So today we plant a flag for the very best that Cape Town and South Africa can be. And now we join hands with our neighbours and friends across the city and we go out from this place this morning to begin the work of the next five years of building a city of pride where ambition and hard work will light the way to a prosperous and inclusive new South African future. Thank you very much.